Today, I'd like to talk to you about a super useful book. This is a book that I have heard recommended by millionaires, multimillionaires on various YouTube channels, podcasts, and you know, with a book where it keeps getting recommended to the point where you just simply can't ignore the signals anymore. So you have to pick it up, read it for yourself, and find out what all the fuss was about. And this book did not disappoint. There are some amazing lessons that I will get into to in this video that I think will be incredibly helpful for you if you're running a business or just getting started in business because a lot of what he talks about, it's much better if you do it from the very beginning. But even if you're already running a business like I am, I have gone back and implemented these systems and they have made my business so much more profitable already. So one of the first things that Mike talks a lot about in this book is actually how few small businesses are successful Successful. He talks about how most small businesses are month to month, you know, one bad month, in fact, could actually put them out of business. And that is the case when I talk to a lot of business owners. He also shares a really personal story at the beginning of this book, which of course helps you connect with Mike and gives you a lot more information about him. But in that story, he talks about how he'd sold his business for millions and millions of dollars. He said he went out and bought every single car he'd ever wanted. He bought a fancy house for himself and his family. But the story ends with his daughter coming in and giving Mike her piggy bank because he is completely broke at this point. And so she says, here you go, daddy. I hope maybe this is going to help us. And that image, that picture is a terrifying thought for any business owner. And that's, of course, what gave Mike the push to write this book, change how he dealt with profit in his business. And so, of course, one of the very first lessons from this book is Mike talks a lot about focusing on the profit of your business. So ignoring the vanity metrics. And as a business owner, you can very easily get caught up in these vanity metrics. So, you know, we did $10,000 last month. I want to do $20,000 this month. Great. We did $20,000 this month. Let's do $30,000 next month. And let's hire more people, you know, and these are metrics that often if you sit down with people, they're the metrics that people brag about. Or oh, my business does $10 million in revenue, mine does $5 million in revenue. And those are the wrong metrics, right? Those are kind of the, um, the vanity metrics is often what people term them as. And really what we want to focus on is the profit. You know, you probably heard the saying before, turnover is vanity, profit is sanity. And that's what you want to be focusing on. And I saw this bit of advice from Mike firsthand this year. I joined a networking group of other the entrepreneurs. And in one of the meetings, we'd gone around the room and everybody had said, you know, my business does 10 million, mine does 1 million, mine does 50. And there was a gentleman there who'd founded a business that did 50 million in revenue. And as everybody else was bragging about their turnover, and once they'd finished that, he asked one question to each person in the group. He said, okay, great. You've told me how much you're turning over, but what is your profit margin? What's your net profit margin? And that was the only metric he used to analyze a business for how healthy that business was. Because he said from bitter experience, having run a business previously that was turning over 50 million, his profit margin was tiny. He said around like 10, 11%. She said made that business so hard, which is why he only actually made money when he sold the business. He wasn't really taking much cash. And that's the very first lesson from this book is focus on the cash that you are actually taking from the business. You don't want to be building a business to have this outcome so far in the future where the only way for you to really make money is when you actually sell your business. The next lesson that Mike talks a lot about in this book is how businesses will consume the cash that you give them. So this is often referred to as lifestyle creep. So you hear this a lot when people get a higher paying job, right? People say, oh, I was earning $60,000. Now I'm running $100,000. And very quickly, they are actually in the same position they were when they were earning $60,000 a year because what they do is they buy a nicer house or they buy a more expensive car or 
they go on nicer holidays. And Mike's point is that your business will also do the same if you let it. And this is something I have been guilty with with my business where as we make more money, I've hired more people, I've invested in more tools, I've invested in all sorts of different ways in the business, but often I've invested a little bit too quickly. And in fact, this has led to some very painful situations over the past 12 months for me. There have been periods where I've had to let people go because we have overspent. And so this lesson from the book about avoiding that lifestyle creep really hit home for me. And he goes on to talk about how you should really analyze every single element of the business and the money that you're actually spending. Later on in the video, I'll talk about how you actually set this up. He talks about a number of different ways you can set up various accounts to make sure that you're on top of your spending. So we'll cover that in a bit because that's really, really important. That's something I have implemented since reading the book. The other key lesson that he talks about here is that traditional accounting is very much a post-mortem of your business bank account. And I really like this idea that the traditional method is turnover, take away all your expenses, and then you get what's left at the end. And what Mike is really driving at in this book is that you should flip that round, right? So what money do you want to make from your business every month? And then how can you make the figures stack up? And so this is really a great exercise in thinking about your business serving you. So many business owners and entrepreneurs that I speak to, I hear all the time say, this wasn't a very good month this month, you know, I've got to pay everybody else and I'm only left with this little bit at the end. And that's because they are doing traditional accounting. You know, I hear them say, oh, I'm waiting to get the figures from my accountant this month to see what I can pay myself. And so Mike has been there, he's felt that pain, I felt that pain. And what he is talking about here is switching that round. So you pay yourself a certain amount every month, you take a certain amount of profit every quarter, and if for some reason that drops, then what you do instead is you look and say, why has this dropped? Do I need to make more sales? Do I need to cut back on expenses? Are we overspending somewhere, right? So he really flips this idea on its head. And of course, this doesn't do away with traditional accounting. You still need to provide traditional accounting for tax returns, etc., for PAYE and all those types of items. But this is just such a big mindset shift in putting yourself first and making sure your business serves you, which I don't think is the case for enough entrepreneurs and business owners. Okay, so earlier in the video, I mentioned the bank accounts that he recommends you set up. This is really, really important. I don't know if you're perhaps a little like me when you're running your business, but you do something that Mike calls a bank balance accounting. It's something I know I'm guilty of. And what that means is simply, I look at the bank account and has the money gone up or has the money gone down, right? That's kind of what I'm checking every day. Of course, I have a professional accountant and we go through the accounts and we properly work out taxes and, and all those items that we need to. But day to day, that's really what I'm doing is that's how I'm basing my decisions. And often it can be really hard to make a decision on whether I hire someone, do we add a certain expense, you know, what profit can I take this month because it was all just in one account. And so he recommends that you set up five different accounts just right away go into your business banking app and set up these accounts. I did this as soon as I read this book. So the accounts that he reckons, you have of course an income account, right? So where all the money comes in. You have an expenses account, all the money that needs to go out every month for expenses, payroll. You then have your owner's compensation as he calls it, which is your own personal pay. You then have a profit account. So the profit account is of course excess money that you are storing up to then pay yourself at a later date. And then of course you have your your tax account, which is where you put all the money to save for your business taxes. So when we talk about these five bank accounts, they're really very simple. So as I said, you have your income account, you have your owners, he calls it owners comp, I just like to call it owners pay, uh, profit, you have your expenses, and then you have your tax account. And so basically what he's talking about with these is so let's say you have 10,000 that comes into your income account, you split these up into percentages. And so you'll have your current average percentage, right? So on average of any 10,000 that comes into your account, you might pay yourself, you know, 10% on average, your profit from this might be 5%, your expenses might be 20%, you know, your tax might be 20%. 
course these don't all add up, but I'm just doing this roughly. And then what you want to do, so these would be your current average percentages. And then he talks about setting up what he calls TAPs, so your target average percentages. And so what you then want to be moving towards is how much of that 10,000 pounds would you ideally like to be getting, right? So you might, your target might be 20% for owner's pay for what you pay yourself. Your profit, you know, you might want to move to getting 10% of profit. You might actually want to drop your expenses to 15% and, you know, your tax is probably going to stay relatively the same. It's not a huge amount, but, you know, we can do about that. And so this is the idea. And he talks about adjusting these slowly. And he says you should start very small with your percentages. So you don't want to dive in and, you know, say I'm going to pay myself 20% when you're currently only giving yourself maybe 2%. He said, in fact, I would much rather go up slowly, 3%, 4%, rather than jump to 10% and have to drop back down. And that's going to not feel good. You won't feel like you're making progress. One point on the taxes that Mike talks about in this book, which, you know, blew my mind in a way and has made me completely rethink how I approach taxes is, again, he refers to how most business owners, you pay yourself. So I pay myself my salary, my dividends, etc. And then from what I've already paid, myself I set money aside and that's what I use to pay my personal taxes he actually says you should do this in a different way he says the business should also pay the owner's taxes and I'd never thought about it like that before but actually it makes a lot of sense so because I would pay myself money then I would take money away from what I've paid myself so I'd, I'd be left with you know much smaller amount and he says instead in your business account where you put money for taxes for your corporation tax for for your VAT here in the UK or GST abroad, etc., And then also for your own personal tax, it should all be done in there. The business should pay all of that for you and you don't need to pay it yourself. Again, this is something I have implemented straight away. Another big lesson from this book that I took away is this idea of actually not delegating too far. So you might be thinking like I did after you're hearing a lot of the lessons from this book and a lot of the advice from this book is that's all well and good, but you know, I want to make $10,000 a month, but I can't take that amount because I've got various people working for me and I have all of these expenses. And so his point on this is that often entrepreneurs and business owners delegate too soon. And it's not something I'd considered before, but I think he's 100% right because I have fallen into this trap of really listening to that idea that if you're working in your business, it's not a business, your business has no value, you know, you need to get out of the business or it's not a business. Business. And so that was so ingrained in me that I really focused on that to kind of build my business into this asset. But he talks about how then business owners sometimes are saying, oh, I don't have that much money left at the end of the month. And that's because they've hired too quickly and they should still be involved in bigger deals, in the much bigger deals going on. Or perhaps it's a case of you need to let someone go, step back in, and then you can be making the money that you want to make from your business. And the other point about this whole system is that once you know the money, you you need to make from your business every month and you have more transparency over it, more clarity, you have all of these accounts set up, you will know the point at which you can hire someone and it'll be much more obvious because you'll know you can still maintain the income that you want. And then there's just a couple other little points that he makes. Um, one thing I really loved from this book was the idea of a celebrations list. So he said that your profit account is really there to fuel this celebrations list that you have. So it's kind of a, a really nice fun way to reward yourself for all the hard work you're putting into your business so these could be things like you know a sports car you've always wanted a holiday you've always wanted to go on or something that you've always wanted to buy and he says have this celebrations list and then as your profit accumulates and then every quarter when you draw down on that profit you can start ticking things off your celebrations list and one of the things he's really specific about is this idea that of course profit is completely separate to your income so figure out what you want to earn every month and we won't get into the nuances of you know depending on which country you're in you might pay yourself a certain amount for tax reasons and the rest of it comes from kind of distributions or dividends but pay yourself the amount that you want to earn every single month and then your profit is extra on top of that.
So that's the extra reward, the icing on the cake for all of your hard work. Another thing I took away from this as well is he talks about how you should wait until your best month becomes your average month. And he talks a lot about how entrepreneurs do this where we're very optimistic people. We hit a new target one month and we say, amazing, this is now the status quo. I'm gonna base my future financial decisions on this new best month that we've had. And that's very tempting to do. I know I've fallen into that trap, but he talks a lot about about, you know, waiting until that best month has become the average over the last six months, 12 months, things like that. So I got a huge amount from this book. It's also just a very well written book. Mike shares these personal stories throughout the book, not just personal stories about himself, but personal stories from other entrepreneurs he knows, he's come across, and it just makes it really relatable and you can relate to the problems that they are all experiencing. So I would highly recommend that you go and grab a copy. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.